behalf of Brian Keith's lovely wife, Victoria, his children, his family, and his friends, I want to, I'm pleased to welcome you here to the dedication of this long overdue but well-deserved star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. It's a tremendous personal honor for me to be able to share this moment with you as we celebrate Brian's long and distinguished career. And while my words will be brief, Brian Keith's list of achievements is most certainly not. His impressive accomplishments live on, indelibly imprinted on film and on the memory of millions of fans around the world. But perhaps more importantly, his spirit is forever imprinted on the hearts of those who personally touch with his generosity, his kindness, and his love. Brian Keith has made things a uniquely talented, extremely realistic actor, a generous and loving father and husband, and a true American patriot, a decorated war hero. An iconic member of this country's greatest generation, Brian Keith was representative of that generation's fierce independence, its honor, and its courage. He shared his ideals, and new attitude, and his determination to live your life on your own terms. And he did it with an uncommon sense of dignity, strength, and humor, especially humor. <laughs> like everyone who knew the bear, I found it irresistible when Brian would get that unmistakable twinkle in his eye because he knew he had another wonderful story to tell, simultaneously fascinating and hilarious, and which invariably was underscored with a much deeper lesson. I never heard him laugh at you. On the contrary, his contagious laughter was always with you. And the stories he most enjoyed telling dealt with the ironies of life and our feeble struggles to survive in a very confusing world. He was born in Bayonne. Yeah. The actors at the time who were on the road while touring the country performing in plays in vaudeville. And Brian once told me his first bed, his crib, with the top drawer of the dressers in the hotel rooms his parents happened to be staying in that week. Fluid in Russian, Brian Keith was nominated for three enemy awards and numerous other awards. He was the consummate working actor, extremely versatile, as comfortable in drama as in comedy, whether on the Broadway stage or on a horse filming in Bishop, California. He was the actor's actor who could do just about any accent you could ask him for, and I often did. Many came to know Brian as the uneducated but honorable Dave Blassingame in the groundbreaking TV series The Rest of or as the warm, understated Bill, Uncle Bill from Family Affair, or the irascible, over-the-top judge Milton C. Hardcastle in Hardcastle in the Corner, but there was so much more. Brian's long list of memorable performances on stage, in television, and particularly in film is diverse and impressive. I won't mention, I won't repeat some of the other roles, but two of my favorites were with Jimmy Stewart and Maureen O'Hara in The Rare Breed, and Nevada Smith and Steve McQueen. His list of impressive credentials goes on, but these roles, as sympathetic as, and as attractive as they were, pale in comparison to his real life role as a Marine gunner. And he corrected me one time because I referred to him as a tail gunner. He got very upset. He was a Marine gunner <laughs> in a dauntless dive bomber fighting a brutal war far away in the South Pacific. As many of you know, American dive bombers early in that war had sustained heavy early losses. This was due in part to the Japanese fighter tactics of staying high above in the sun. And when the Marine dive bombers would make their dive, they would be shot out. These guys would come out of the sun and take them out. So the, the Pentagon put gunners, marine gunners in the back of these dauntless dive bombers. And they armed them with 50 caliber machine guns. And this had an immediate impact and it eventually saved the lives of many American airmen. Brian Keith was one of those gunners. And one day, he and his fellow Marines were entertaining themselves at their air base on Guadalcanal, Canal, shooting at empty bottles with their standard 45 issue caliber pistols. And Brian, as a change of pace, had loaded his 45s with small tracer rounds which were apparently a lot of fun to shoot. However, later that day, his squadron was sent on a mission to attack the large Japanese air base at Rabaul. As Brian's dive bomber began its steep dive over Rabaul's runways, out of the sun from high above came two Japanese zeros. 
lying on his back, looking straight up in the air. Brian saw them rapidly closing, took aim, and began firing his twin 50 powers. He walked his bullets, which included a tracer every fourth round, toward the approaching fighters. As the Zeros experienced his deadly fire, they wisely started to pull away, when suddenly Brian Keith's guns jammed, both of them. The Zeros quickly saw this, immediately turned back and resumed their attack. The return fire began raking Brian's dauntless with multiple hits. Without missing a beat, Brian Keith reached for the pair of 45 caliber pistols that he always kept with him, clamped them to the jammed 50 caliber machine guns, and he began to fire them, clamped them there to help steady his aim. And because he had forgotten to reload the pistols, they still contained tracer rounds from earlier in the day. Thinking the Dauntless machine guns were operational again, the Japanese pilots abandoned their attack and veered sharply away. They did not return. Brian did not tell me this or other similarly amazing stories of his life until shortly before he passed away. However, that didn't surprise me because Brian was not one to ever talk or brag about himself. He did not live a celebrity lifestyle, he did not seek publicity, he never craved attention. In fact, getting him to reel anything about his very fascinating life was like pulling teeth. Deeply devoted to his family, Brian Keith had a very soft heart, and those who knew him deeply admired him for it. While he was not known to suffer fools, to this day, I get letters from fans who years ago he had written to because they had apparently written him because they were sick or they were in trouble. Often he would keep this correspondence up with these total strangers over very long periods of time. In the all too short time I was lucky enough to have worked with Brian King, I never once saw him drink, I never once saw him smoke. However, I did see him fight his final battle against emphysema and cancer with class, with humor, and with flashes of that incredible smile. More than anything, I will remember Brian King for what he was and always will be, a United States Marine and one of the greatest actors any of us will ever have the privilege to know. Thank you for coming. And